What, what about you, you, Brad? What's your, uh, what's your best idea of this quarter? Yeah, so what I did for this, uh, there's nothing I'm actively buying at the moment. So I decided to do a little work for you guys. I went into MOI and there was just a, a wide moat conference, sort of a best ideas conference based on wide moats. And I watched five presentations for companies that were under a billion market cap. And the one in the US that that uh, is actually somewhat compelling is FRP Holdings. Uh, it's like a half a billion market cap. Um, I'm going to send you, Frank, the link so you can I don't know, is it easy enough to pop up for people if I send it to you in the private chat? Yeah, go ahead, Brad. I'll, I'll pull it up. All right. There it is. So what is FRP? Um, so they, they have basically two big segments. One is they run gravel pits. Okay, they own these gravel pits. They don't actually operate the gravel pits. Uh, they earn a royalty on the gravel pits. And one interesting thing about aggregates, uh, which is kind of the industry term for gravel pits, uh, Peter Lynch actually talked about gravel pits in One Up on Wall Street. Um, he said, if you've got the only gravel pit in Brooklyn, you've got a virtual monopoly, uh, plus the added protection of the unpopularity of rock pits, right? The whole idea of NIMBY, if, if you have a mine, like it's really hard to get other mines up and running because nobody wants them in their backyard. And the thing about gravel pits, how far can you actually truck gravel in a cost-effective way? You can't. So if you're the only gravel pit in like a 50 mile radius, you have a monopoly. Um, so that's that's one aspect of their business. How, how, how significant is that within the portfolio? Uh, what, what percentage of their total value does it make up? Yeah. Or just approximately like, is it a quarter, half? It's, most? it's about, it's about a third of their value of their net asset value. And so how, how many properties is it? Is it just these on the site or are there um, others? they have, they have about nine multifamily properties and mm -hmm. then they have a bunch of land properties. So like, like this Hyde Park thing right here, this would be an example of the land they own. Right. And right. Here's like a multi-unit complex. Yep. Gotcha. So, so the other big one is the multifamily that they own in Washington, DC. Um, and it's, you know, right, right along the river. I don't know how many of you have been to DC. I haven't been to I DC. Have not. Okay. But um, they have seven multifamily sites near Amazon, second headquarters uh, in DC. And these are class A riverfront multifamily properties. Uh, there's some that are, you know, fully occupied. There's some that, that are still being developed. Um, but the estimate for those is, you know, it's about 300 million for, for net asset value for the multifamily properties, about 250 million for the uh, aggregate now, one of the really interesting things about the gravel pits, one of these gravel pits is 100 acres in Fort Myers, Florida, okay? Um, and so they have this company, Vulcan, basically, you know, mining the gravel for them. Um, and their plan is when the pit has been dug, uh, the beautiful thing about this, this area in Fort Myers is that it turns into a lake, okay? So now... They have a hundred acres of lakefront properties. So Vulcan is paying them to dig them a lake to have lakefront properties. So, right. you know, 2028, the plan is to sell, you know, a hundred one acre properties in Fort Myers for, you know, like $50 million or no, $150 million. So that, that was kind of a, a funny nuance. Um, but so it looks like, you know, the current share price is around $59. It uh, looks like the net asset value is somewhere around $81 per share. So there's a, about a 30% margin of safety. And is that assuming the, those like developments along the lake go through or are you factoring kind of the future value or just currently? No, like that's, that's current, that's current oh. value. That's yep. an idea right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 
good good find brad i want to look into that more um, yeah no it's, it's it's interesting i think especially for those of us who own seritage it's got some yeah. has similar qualities elements yeah and but not quite as uh, cumbersome to work through <laughs> exactly you don't have to look up 170 properties and try to figure out what they're worth the uh the lakefront or create a lakefront property <laughs> I, I, it just kind of blew my mind a that, little yeah bit. That, I, I that's interesting the, the, like you're theoretically saving on development costs if they're digging a hole for you. Um, though I wonder, I'm sure they're not just filling it with water right then. There's got to be some sort of like remediation after that. I don't know what that looks like, but yeah, certainly I don't, I don't know. The, I don't know the details of that. I love this one, Brad. Uh, and the CEO owns 15%. So it's got a, a pretty heavy insider ownership aspect as well. And in 2020, you know, it was quite a bit cheaper it, and management was buying back shares at about half of NAV. So there's that, you know, shareholder orientation that, that management clearly has.